What is up guys, Sun Wars, welcome to another VPL battle from his release, this calendar. And if you want to see a team preview or the battle, the links are up there when the battle starts. If you want to see my team analysis, stay here. And yeah, basically get away if you don't want to see it. <laughs> anyway, this is against Greg and of course you got ring and uh, a very late game at that. Um, I wasn't supposed to battle a guy named Turbo in Turbo Drills in week 2, but due to him being active, he was actually forced to drop out and uh, Greg took over and changed his team quite a bit since then and uh, for the worst I would say and that's it's a good thing for him as a bad thing for me because the team is much 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 stronger and so much so that I basically was not interested in battling him and basically went through the ways of saying that uh, I have an auto win due to the inactivity of Turbo but here we are. Now, something deep si down inside of me kind of wanted that due to me not being in a worse position, <laughs> I should say, that um, Slow definitely deserved a game versus me, and I also do believe that the other players here in the VPL do deserve a proper game or a proper, a proper showed game, therefore here we are. And as you guys can see on the right screen here, we have a team that is terrifying. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. We have Excadrill, not too shabby, Mia Garchomp, not too threatening, Tyranitar, which sets up sand, motherfucker. Uh, then we have Gudra, Tentacruel, very good spinner, Whimsicott, Tailwind, of course, Mega Garchomp, awful, Confergus, a freaking wall from hell, uh, Blaze again with Blaze, trust me, it's dangerous. Then you see Lipod, Stoutland, in sand, splendid, it's the fourth. And Manetric. So a very very strong team and I actually did debate back and forth whether or not which Pokemon I should use. Now I had two options. I either take the offensive route, which is highly unlikely that I can do with this team in mind, or uh, I try to bring a more defensive team and try to take on Excadrill and Southland. I decided to take the offensive route and I'm going to try to explain to you guys how that worked out. Or rather, how that will work out for this specific team, because it's it's kind of scary doing this, because it can backfire on me, and it all depends on what kind of Tyranitar I'm facing. It also depends on if it goes fully sad or not, but I am going with this mindset that he's probably going to try to outmaneuver me with sand, which means I won't see Whimsicott. So I'm going with the mindset, freaking Whimsicott, which I'm probably are a bit weak to, or rather, lack of switching for with this team. Delphox is basically here for that reason alone to be able to take on its stabs. Delphox actually makes its debut here, and um, it's a fairly interesting mod. Um, going with Life Orb set, was debating the. Um, the um, Co Coa Berry, yeah. I think it was called that. The Colbert Berry, the one that reduced dark damage in case Rent or. Uh, is Pursuit trapping me, but I said, you know what, fuck it, you know, if that happens, that happens. Uh, Grass Nut does roughly 60% of special defensive Tyranitar, so, um, yeah, yeah, we, we, we are gonna go for Grass Nut. I don't know why Delphox doesn't learn Focus Blast. This is probably the first time I realized that, and like, you are probably the first Psychic type who does, I, I don't, why? <laughs> anyway, outside of that, we have Fire Blast, Psych Shock, and, uh, or what's that? Hidden Power Ice? Hidden Power Ice in case he thinks he can soak any damage from Delphox. Delphox actually wanted to kill Mega Garchomp if he isn't specially defensive. Which is kind of good. Delphox actually does outspeed a few of his Pokemon. One of them being Tentacruel. Which could be extremely helpful. And um, I have a few things to watch out for at, at best. But Delphox's main role here is going to be to poke hole as a team. And it's probably one of the few mods that can deal with Yuxi, um, arguably at least better than the other ones. And then we're going with Cobalion, and this is an anti excadrill Cobalion with Shukaberry. Uh, it's somewhat special defensive, max speed, or speed enough for Manitric, um, so close to max speed. Then the rest is put on attack, basically. Um, it's... It isn't that strong, I do believe I put like a 128 in its attack, so it's not the strongest. But we have of course Close Combat, Volt Switch, uh, which might actually be a bit strange, but I need some kind of utility in case of Tentacruel. 
Since Santa Cruz, oh, sorry for joining. Since Santa Cruz actually was this guy fairly well. Um, outside of that, you know, close combat Iron Head solves the solves the best really. Uh, then we have Palace One, which is um, the safety net number two for Exit Drill. Uh, enough defense investment to be able to take um, a Sand Rush Life Orb Adam and Extra Drills Iron Heads and retaliate with Iron Head in return. It's close to max defense and uh, impish with a bit of uh, a dubly attack investment, basically to ensure a 2 hit KO on my Garchomp. And trust me, I, I want to I wanna be able to do that. And. Uh, yeah, it's super simple. Stealth Rocks, if if it's possible, we're gonna go with Stealth Rocks. But it's Ice Shot, Earthquake, and Ice Cold Crash, and I really don't need anything outside of that. Uh, also, I can't take a High Jump Kick from, of course, a Blazing, so that, that's kind of nice. So they are the, the mods that are a bit more flexible, and then we have the ones that are pretty much straightforward. Hydreigon, uh, speed enough to outspeed Yuxi, and uh, yeah, yeah, Dark Walls, because... Awesome. And then we have, of course, uh, Draco this time around, because it doesn't necessarily have too many mods that can come in on that naturally without losing a pleasure of XP. The only one doing so is Tyranitar, and that one can't take a superpower. Um, Whimsicott is also, like I said, able to pull, probably pull that off, but I'm kind of thinking it won't make it. I I'm insisting on that. And then we have uh, Fire Blast, in case he brings that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I do believe that's Bleak's moveset. It's very straightforward, very, very heavy hitting, and is with, of course, Expert Belt, because I don't want residual damage. Then we have Tornadoes, kind of the same jazz here. Fast enough to outspeed, I do believe uh, that was Minetric. I think that was the only speed your mana had to outspeed. Um, but we are timid, a bit more bulky with Assault Vest. And then the, the regular jazz of Hurricane and stuff like that, and knockoffs of power, whatever. It's it's one of those mods that does well the the later game or the later as the games goes because it can it can handle a few matchups, which is kind of nice and kind of what you want with that kind of Pokemon. And the last one, my Venus, my glorious Neptunia or Mega Dengi, uh, Rock Polish would of course protect because why not? Ne kind of need protect for Sandstone turns. Dianji is probably the only one that actually can waste turns due to sand, which is kind of what I want to do with Dianji outside of going, of course, the likes of Earth Power and Moonblast. Now, Moonblast doesn't do over 50% of special defense to Tyranitar or Yuxi, and that's going to be a thing. Um, I don't want to go for Rock Polish if I know that they are still around, because um, Tyranitar chaos me with, of course, the likes of Earthquake without a really... Like, it does have super easy. And then we have Yuxi, which can pack Giga Drain, Energy Ball, can have a Power of Steel, you know, whatever you name it. And Yuxi just overall is super, super annoying to deal with. So, uh, they have to be gone for me to go for Rock Polish. Granted, if I go for Rock Polish and they are gone or Wheel Down, I win. Because there is nothing on that team that takes any hit from me outside of that. Confagurus might, but... It's, you know, he has to be defensive, he has to decide for something else, so it's not a switch-in, and I don't die to an energy ball, I know that. So, with all that said, here comes the transition to the battle! So, right, here is the matchup, and we did predict somewhat right. Um, short burst here, really, because this video gets a length of this. Um, Tyranitar Yuxi needs to die. Uh, for uh, Dianchi to win the game. There is nothing on his team that takes on Mega Dianchi outside of them, and they can't retaliate in return with heavy damage, which is something I'm not looking forward to seeing. And basically, I'm gonna lead up with Cobalion because Yuxi feels like the obvious choice here. We do have taunts, we do have the ways of dealing with it, we're gonna do our best to try to deal with it. So, yeah, outside of that, um, I, like I said, if Yuxi and Trendor is gone, and I can somehow stall out the possible sand, then uh, I should win. I, I really, really, really feel confident going into this game. But knowing Greg so far, and of course him playing in the MNBA Finals, I can expect anything, because if it's something he is, that is a, that is a strong player. So um, I have to play this game right, because if I, if I don't do that, I probably lose more momentum than I can actually risk here for this specific game. So, with all that said, 
Let's go. So, Alright, I do really somewhat right when it comes to Cobalion is the right uh, Pokemon to leave with. As it starts off with Excadrill and I do have Sugarberry Cobalion. So all I really can do here is go for that close combat. You know, I need a damage. I wanted to really bait him to attack me as he switches out and goes to Knowledge. Now, here's the thing. I'm going for close combat. Obviously, I won't do necessarily anything. And also, in right, he is going to try to get a Rocks. I don't have a Mega Evolution. I don't have anything like that. Having that in mind, I need to go for Taunt because I can't risk the Rocks, at least not this early. As when I go for Taunt, he's going to attack. Predict that. And the Psychic does so much damage due to me going for a close combat previously. And what's even worse is I get a special defense drop. I would have been forced to switch out no matter what, but that definitely was the last nail in the coffin as he's back to full HP basically. So knowing that I would switch out, he's gonna switch out. I do went for a Volt Switch instead, which was kind of risky considering the Manetric and all. And he is risky as hell going to, of course, this guy and... Um, yeah, we're just mind blown because I kind of realized you, you motherfucker, you switched this in just to just to taunt me <laughs> as I got out. So I'm gonna go to Veralis as uh, I'm gonna be buffed, but of course, Mighty Sandstorm as we said, see leftovers. All I think was, oh, thank God, it's not Smooth Rock. So we now I know, of course, that the, rock, the sand is not gonna be active for as long as I decided to go for a superpower. Obviously, it won't do a whole lot here. And I was kind of feeling, damn, why don't I have Hidden Power Ice to this? That would have been so nice, as uh, I'm of course going to be forced to switch out. And I'm going actually to sack Cobalion, because I've played that guy too poorly, and I'm already forced to do a sack play due to Greg making those very, very nice call early game. But, yeah, what do you know? What do you know? You know, this guy's gonna make evolve and of course become as might as he can. I was really hoping for a Stone Edge here, but he is actually gonna go for a Dragon Claw. And you know what that means? Somebody heard that call. Somebody heard I was in trouble. And here she is. But yeah, all I'm gonna do is like go for protect because you know I, I still need to kind of make a ball now, don't I? I can't risk the earthquake either because earthquake does hurt. And we stole out some standard, which is always nice. As he's gonna be forced to switch out now. As um, I'm just gonna go for the you know the basic, basic, basic moon blast. And here comes of course knowledge to Yuxi, and we don't do a lot. That is special defensive as hell. And I'm all I'm thinking is. You know how I'm gonna break through. Uh, sure, I could stain against it, but I'm still can't touch Trant, or I don't want to get unnecessarily damage on this. As he's gonna switch out, go into his uh, Tyranitar again, and I was really thinking, why, why would you do this? I actually think I protect now. That I think about it, uh, just to kind of you gotta get in a better position. As um, he's of course gonna stain because there's no reason for him not to, um, and I'm just gonna go for protect because, like I said previously. I really, really can't play those risky games. I cannot, but I have to stall the turns. I really have to stall the turns. So all I'm gonna do now is switch in Peel Swine. As uh, he's gonna predict me and go for um, um, Excadrill. And this is this is awesome in so many ways because, like I said previously, uh, I should be able to take an Iron Head from this guy. As it does way more than a Calc said, but we do manage to survive it. And we go to retaliate our power and knock out Excadrill. So, boom! <laughs> Massive threats avoided. But yeah, he was actually Sand Force and not Sand Rush. That's why the reason he did so much damage. So he's gonna bring Scarron here. I am just going to sack my Pillow Swine and go for Ice Shot. As he goes for return. And it doesn't do anything. And uh, the reason for that is because his Stoutland is not happy with him. <laughs> so he's gonna keep going for returns. So I kind of realize that, okay. I can probably switch in five for here without any kind of risk, and um, yes, and there is no risk involved in this. And I can just lock myself into wherever I want. The feeling that Yuxi is going to be his number one switch in, we are just gonna bring Hydreigon in here as uh, 
He's gonna bring, of course, Kiyu, which is not the, the the knowledge Pokemon. So I'm forced to go for Draco because I can't risk it as the Tyranitar comes in to set up the sand, of course. And then I'm in the you know that sweet spot where, right now I have to go for superpower. I lost special attack. I lost, of course, the superpower. Uh, I, I need to go for the power because I need to be able to knock this guy out somehow. But of course, like I said here, he, he still has Yuxi, but I really can't take a risk on this. I really need to go for that superpower as, um, you know, he, he does the obvious thing. But to be completely honest, who the hell wouldn't have done it? I am in no position of predict here. I really just need to break through yet again. As the knowledge comes in and superpower does, I don't jack shit. And being that, of course, Yuxi can learn Dazzling Gleam, I am now in no position of staying in whatsoever. I really can't risk this. I really need to switch out. And for, of course, Yuxi, I really, really don't have any switching outside of Delphox. And I feel now it is in the area where Delphox should be able to break through and probably be able to enforce it to knock out. So Lumen is going to come in. And uh, we're just gonna go for that safe fire blast as he goes for protect, which I thought was strange. I would say at the moment, but you know, fair enough. And um, yeah, fire blast should be able to do well, pretty much killing it depending on the set. But um, but it's only because fire blast is so insanely strong. <laughs> and he's actually gonna bring Tyranitar, go, and the fire blast shouldn't do too much to this guy. It really shouldn't. But we have Grass Knot, and I feel like he is within the area where I should be able to be close to taking him out. Um, and Fire Blast does a pretty decent chunk, I should say. But right, like I said there, I'm basically gonna sack Delphox here, going down to the Earthquake. It's what I'm feeling. And there really aren't so many things I can do. So Grass Knot actually do, like I said there, a whole lot of damage. But it's not completely able to take him out, as he decides to go for Pursuit. Which is great, because Pursuit doesn't take me out as the Sandstorm subside. Knowing that it subsided, I know he can't risk it, because that means his Southland is pretty much useless versus me. So I'm just gonna go for Fire Blast, because I have the option to pull that off. As Yuxi comes back, and you guys gonna see something beautiful. For all your Yuxi haters out there who hate this mom for, for his share bulk, look at that. That is not a switching. That is not a switching. Um, so yeah, all I'm gonna do now is hope that he tries to take another fire blast and go for um, his god jump. As sadly he does protect, and it's actually quite alright. Uh, I do decide there to go for fire blast anyway because I felt that you know the damage output kind of close by to what a hidden power possibly could do. But the fire blast is of course a guarantee KO. Even though I could miss, but that didn't happen, so yay me. So yeah, Luma is gonna fall, but you know, that is completely fine. As we are now in a rather nice spot where Neptunia can come in kind of freely actually and see if he decides to go for sand, because if he does that, then I have the option to, of course, protect, which is actually is the plan, because I need him to waste precious sand turns, because there's really nothing I can do. As um, I was thinking here, you know, what if he's switching into Stuffland anyway? But I realize I still have the same amount of switch turns anyway, or protect turns because I don't use protect anyway. So I'm feeling that you know I'm 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 a bit I'm a bit boring here, of course, but going for protect. But Moonblast is guaranteed going to take him out anyway. So I have the option to at least kind of enforce the sand turns to be shortened out. As he goes, of course, Scarander and. Uh, I'm actually not in an area of taking him out, depending on his set. And realizing this, I am just going to do, you know, the best I can here to get the damage. So the first thing we're gonna do is switch in, of course, Fifor, which of course my Cobalion sacking it. But the Darn Head here shows me that it is definitely bandits, but we do manage to live it somehow. And then I'm gonna switch this one out, go into Tornadoes. And decide to sack him instead, or rather, I can survive an Iron Head and then, of course, retaliate with uh, uh, with a superpower. Granted, I will die due to me going for the superpower, but that's kind of the point because that means that the energy can just wrap the game up, which is what we want. Um, there is really no other play I have left in me outside of that. He can't stop the energy. He has no switching for the energy that can't survive. 
the moon blasted both Mega Garchomp, Manetric and Stoutland which are left are not able to take on Mega DNG and yeah this is pretty much GG and it was I will say this it was a very very interesting game because I I played Cobalion so bad at the start I, I really 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 did um, I really was thinking you know he's gonna have stealth rocks and stuff like that but no he didn't and uh, <sighs> sorry for joining as the battle transpires, um, realizing that Cobalion was very, very sackable at the moment, all I really could do was hoping that we had a situation where Pillowswine was trying to fend off against the likes of uh, uh, Excadrill, and then basically hope I didn't get flinched by the Iron Head, because outside of that, I would have relied heavily on pulling off a Rock Polish and Willow down his team, and when he can reset the sand the way he can, it's not an easy thing for me to do, so me screwing up Cobalion, major mess up, and me, of course, getting Pillow Swine matchup, kinda nice, but obviously incredibly lucky too. But yeah, that's pretty much the game. Um, like I said here, uh, Greg, I think I think he has the better, uh, he has a better start of the match. I think he gains all the momentum I was so desperately trying to build from the get-go. Um, by being defensive or by responding correctly, uh, it didn't really break through until Exeril actually went down. Once that mon went down, with Exeril being, of course, probably his most valuable mon for him for dealing, of course, with Mega Dienshi. Once that was gone, Dienshi, whenever it came in, hurt stuff and it hurt stuff a lot. And um, it was just basically a, a match of can I stall out the sand enough to make Dienshi come back? Because in the sand, it's not as effective, and um, I think it worked out just fine. But uh, I will say this: I think Greg, I, he took a risk. It didn't pay off, but uh, I probably would have done the same from that situation, no matter what, because he was a unique set that did more damage than I ever was imagined. And he, he did say it wasn't adamant. He was jolly. Had it been adamant. He would have knocked out a pillow spine, and that would not have been pretty. That would have been the worst kind of man or kind of situation I ever could got, get at. So hopefully I don't face Grey again. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, everybody else. Um, and make sure to, of course, give some support to Greg. I will upload their final battle in MMA once they have that done. Greg is, like I said, a very, very good battler. And um, I think he played something unique this time. It didn't pay off. But it, it might as well have done that, if, of course, with the right prep with stuff and whatnot. But that's the game. Uh, I know what I was facing, and I was trying to survive it. And I prepped right. I think that was all comes down to. Had I had what a Tailwind set with Whimsy Cut, I would not have been as strong as I was in this one. It's it's the goddamn truth. Having that, Sila, having that said, guys, thank you so much, of course, for watching. And I see you in the next video. Until then, take care.